Hello everyone, my name is Brianna. If you're new here, I have a small business called Moon Wax Galaxy where I sell 100% soy, wax melts, and candles. Cool. So today, I'm going to try out something new, if I can. I get this question quite a bit um, from people, which is, how do I make my own candle, right? And I've talked about this with some of my friends. I don't have an issue with anyone asking me this question. It's just that I could never necessarily go into depth about how to make a candle only because usually this is at events and stuff where I'm like busy. So I give people sort of like a shortened version, which isn't all that helpful. <laughs> so we're gonna get into like the nitty gritty of how to make a candle. So today I actually bought a candle making kit. So this candle making kit comes from Candle Science. Candle Science is essentially a place where you can get all sort of candle making supplies. So you can get jars, you can get wax, you can get wicks, you can get the whole nine yards. There are other suppliers that will provide you with candle supplies if you want to do the research, but I know that Candle Science is the most popular. A lot of these websites will also have candle making kit starter kits just so you can get started or learn how to make a candle. So. I thought the best way for me to do this is to sort of get a kit. This kit is actually the fall holiday kit. So the scents are sort of fall holiday scented themed. That being said, I think the other kit has different scents or something like that. It is fall right now, so yeah. But we're gonna go through this box. I'm gonna go through step by step how to make a candle and then even give my own two scents and advice. So first, let's do an unboxing. Okay, so here's the box. We are going to open her up. And I'm gonna sort of whip it around. And I'm gonna whip this stuff up. I'm kinda gonna do it sideways. So, first things first, starter kit. It has instructions, step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. What I'm gonna do is probably take a picture of this and put it somewhere on the screen but yes this is step-by-step -step instructions oh it's weird because they printed it <laughs> the first half is what is like this way but then the other half is this way on the back you have sort of getting started instructions which we'll probably read together and then you also have a materials list so let's go through the materials list while we're also doing the unboxing so we have Golden Brands Foist, uh, Foist, 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 464 Wax, Soy Wax. So there's many different types of wax. There is soy wax, paraffin wax, coconut blend wax. There are blends. So if someone says that their candles or their wax, they use a blend with their wax, that just means that they probably use two different types of wax um, and mix it and melt and mix them together. There's various different reasons why someone would do this because each wax has its own advantages and disadvantages. Usually soy and coconut sort of blends are seen as more natural versus paraffin. But honestly, there's really nothing wrong with paraffin. It's just a personal preference. Paraffin tends to hold, at least from what I've heard, paraffin tends to hold fragrance oil better than some of the other waxes so you'll get a stronger scent again that's personal preference i've been using soy wax ever since i started my business and i have no issue have had no issue with working with soy wax and getting it to smell pretty strong in my opinion again but yeah this is golden blend 464 wax flakes they are also different sort of wax uh soy wax blends or wax flakes this is a 464 one. I'll probably go into detail about the differences between some of the soy waxes when it comes to this number because there's like 464, 444, 440, you know, whatever. For now, again, we'll just focus on this blend because this is what they gave us. So we have that. We also have our actual fragrance oils. These are these, these sort of small samples. So you can get these in different sizes, but since we are only making small candles, we have these, these containers and I'm gonna take them out of the bag real quick. So this one is Fraser Fur. And then this one is Apple Harvest. So we have these two. So these two are sort of our fragrance oils. And fragrance oils is essentially what's gonna give your wax, I mean not your wax, your candle its scent. Oh, we have another bag of wax. 
So we have two. Sorry. <laughs> we have two bags of soy wax, which both each bag is one pound. So we have two pounds of wax. We also have measuring cup. Measuring cup. We have our wicks here, which we will need to burn. Obviously the candle. We also have, hold on, let me open up the container. We also have warning labels. So with warning labels, you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to absolutely put warning labels on your jars. The reason why is because, le well, A, legally you have to, especially if you're selling them. But two, this warning label helps protect you against anyone that does not burn their candle properly, but also lets your consumer know how to burn their candle properly, which, you know, is basic stuff of like, you know, keep it, keep it away from you know, things that can catch fire. Don't burn for more than 40, you know, four hours at a time. Keep away from children and pets. Burn within sight, stuff like that. Also have, huh, if I can get them out, this bag is hard to open. We also have these sort of like wick centering, wick centers. I've never really worked with these before, so we'll try them out together. But essentially, you put the wick through here in order to keep the wick in the middle of the jar. It's important that your wick is in the middle of the jar at all times because if you are using particularly glass, it might be okay for metal, but if you're using a glass jar, you have to make sure that it is in the middle only because you don't want one side of the jar to warm up too much because it may crack or even worse, it might explode. So it's very important to try to use what you can to keep the wick in the center. They have these centering devices that look like this. I will insert a picture of the ones that I use and try to show you, I'll probably show you an example of the ones that I use in this tutorial and we'll go over that too. Some people also use sort of like, not bobby pins, but those like clothes hanger clips. Those can also work just fine. And then you also have these glue dots to stick the wick to the bottom of the container or the jar that you are using. I personally just bought a glue gun and you know, use a glue gun to glue it down, but you can also technically buy these sort of glue dots where you stick it on one side and then stick it to the bottom of the jar. You could also get these. If you want a glue gun, it's not that expensive. You could probably get one at Family Dollar for like $2. I've also seen glue guns at the Dollar Tree. I don't know how well they work, but it's not that expensive to get one. So yes, we also have these along with our wicks. And then the last thing in question is our actual tins. So as you can see, we have our tins. The silver tins, they look like this. And then we should have about six of them. So that is everything that should be in our kit. Let me make sure. It also lists additional supplies that you may need that are not in the kit. You may need a metal spoon or stirring utensil paper towels, rubbing alcohol, or even a pot holder, and then clean up. This is just warnings that we'll go over. So again, I will read all of this and then we are going to do it together. This is the uh, Candle Science Candle Making Kit. I should also mention I am not sponsored. I am not sponsored it by this. This is not promotion. This is not a sponsorship. I'm just doing this to help start people off on trying to how to, how to make a candle, figure out how to make a candle. So yes. So there's a couple things, extra things we should go over before I get into the good part. There'll be timestamps to help out with this. So first aid procedures for fragrance oil, your fragrance oil, skin contact, remove any contaminated clothing, wash area, affected areas thoroughly with soap and water. If irritation persists, contact a physician, eye contact. So if you happen to get fragrance oil, God forbid, into your eyes, flush immediately with clean water for uh, minutes, contact a physician if irritation persists, move to fresh air if you notice irritation, ingestion, give water or milk to dilute, and then contact a physician immediately. Don't ingest this, by the way. So setting up your workplace. Candle making can take up some space, so it's important to find a convenient area with enough room for pre preparing the candle containers, melting the wax, and cooling the candles. Be sure your workspace has easy access to a microwave but is separate from where you typically prepare food. Cover your work area with newspaper or butcher paper to easily clean up any spills or drops that may occur. We recommend working in an area with a consistent room temperature. We find that a temperature range of 68 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit works best 
microwave safety precautions. Now, I know that you can microwave this wax. I'm personally, I'm not gonna microwave the wax. Again, there's absolutely nothing wrong if you want to microwave the wax. What we're gonna do is a double boiler method, which I will explain in the future and why it is good to do the double boiler method. So microwave safety precautions, keep a careful watch while heating wax in the microwave and do not walk away. Melting soy wax typically takes four minutes but can vary depending on the microwave. Be sure to use heating chart and directions as a guide. The plastic pitcher and melted wax will be hot. Use the handle to hold the pitcher and if needed, a pot holder when removing it from the microwave. Burning safety candles are meant to be enjoyed. So now we're on burning safety. Candles are meant to be enjoyed, but it is important that you follow some common sense safety rules when burning them. Never leave a candle uh, uh, burning unattended. Exting extinguish all candles when you leave a room or before going to sleep. Follow the two foot rule. Don't place a burning candle within two feet of clothing, books, curtains, or anything flammable. Keep it lit candles away from drafts, ceiling fans, and any air currents. Trim the wick to about a one fourth inch each time the candle is lit. This helps prevent the flame from getting too large. Keep candles out of reach of children and pets. Place candle holders on stable heat resistant surface that is sturdy and large enough to catch any melted wax. Always read and follow the manufacturer's directions for use in safety and extinguish a candle if the flame gets too close to the candle holder or container. Place burning candles at least three inches apart from one another. A burning candle should not be used as a nightlight. A candle should not be burned for more than four hours at a time. So that's everything. Next whew, is the actual steps. Oh, also before I forget, this candle making kit, again, I'm not sponsored. I got on Candle Science, it costs about from what I remember, about $30. The only thing that kind of sucks when it comes to candle making supplies is shipping. From what I have discovered is that shipping can be very, 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 very expensive. And this is just with me being based in the US. A lot of times, depending on what you're ordering, it may come out to be an additional like 20 bucks. So even though I did get this candle making kit for about $30 with shipping, it came out to almost like 50. So just be warned if you are interested in the Candle Science uh, kit, the shipping is, is, is pretty steep. It's kind of an arm and a leg. So just as a warning, I, you can probably maybe find some more can, uh, candle making kits elsewhere. I'm just showcasing this one because that is the one that, I don't know, I just picked. So yes, yes, yes. Okay, so first things first, we are going to, we're going to put the wicks into our containers. So I'm going to take the wicks out of the out of the bag. You should have six because we have six of these candle tins. Always, you know, count up everything that you have when you unbox stuff because if you come up short, you can you you'll be able to email Candle Science or wherever you got it from and let them know that way they can fix it. So I'm going to take one of the jars here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take one of these wicks. And then you're going to take one of these glue dots. So what you do is you take it off and on one side, you're going to stick it to the bottom of this wick. And then you're going to peel the paper off. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this wick inside your candle uh, tin. As you can see, the, can the candle tin has like a circle in there. You want to match up the circle to that tin because that's where the center um, of the jar is. So you're going to stick it in there. And make sure you kind of use your fingers to press it down real good because what you don't want to happen is sometimes if you don't press down hard enough it might move around when you pour your wax in and you don't want that to happen so this is what it should look like once you have the wick in place and we're going to do that for all the other jars as well so also make sure you keep your lids together just put it off the side off to the side for now and we are going to do this for all of our other tins. Also, while I'm sitting right here, what I think is important that the kit doesn't give you is some sort of thermometer because in candle making, it's very, very important 
to add your fragrance oil in at the right temperature. The reason why I say this is because you want to make sure that the fragrance oil does not burn off if you put it at, in at the wrong temperature. So that's why it's very important if you don't have, because this kit doesn't seem to really give you one, please, 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 if you can, go out and get a thermometer. It doesn't have to be the, the, the fancy one. You could just use, you could also use a food one where you just stick it in the wax and it tells you what temperature your wax is at. So, so at the bottom of the instructions, you can see in this black chart right here that it says the wattage and the time you should warm your wax up. A lot of people probably don't know what wattage their microwave is at, but if you are at 700 wattage, you wanna warm it up for four minutes and 30 seconds. A thousand wattage, four minutes, and 1200 wattage, three minutes and 30 seconds. After you put the wicks in, it's telling you to immediate, to fill the plastic container all the way up to the top with wax. Um, it's okay to lightly press down on it if you need room to fit all the wax. Um, and then microwave it, it on high heat as directed below. Do not leave the microwave unattended. After that, you're going to remove the wax from the microwave using the handle on the pitcher. If needed, use a pot holder. Immediately pour in one bottle of fragrance and stir. Continue to stir for two minutes to ensure the fragrance mixes fully into the wax. Carefully pour the wax into your prepared tins. Fill each tin to half an inch from the top using the raised edges inside to trim and use as a guide. Place the wick bar on top of your tin. Pull the wick taut and press it into the opening of the wick bar to keep it straight and centered. Allow the candles to cool overnight. Remove the wick bar and trim the wick to one fourth of an inch. Place the lid on each container and add a warning label to the bottom of each tin and then enjoy. We recommend allowing the candles to cure for at least three to four days before burning or two to three weeks for optimal scent throw. Remember to follow all candle burning safety rules. So going over the instructions, essentially it's just saying how you put an entire bag of wax into your measuring cup, heat it up, and then add an entire bottle of fragrance oil. You serve for two minutes and then you pour. So what what I don't like about these instructions is that it doesn't really tell you how much fragrance oil to use, aka your fragrance load, in comparison to your wax. So when you are using wax, every type of wax has its own fragrance load. And fragrance load just means how much uh, fragrance you can pour for a certain amount of wax, right? Like there has to be a certain ratio that goes in there because you don't want it to be uh, not enough and your candle doesn't smell like anything, but you also don't want it to be too much or else your candle may start sweating, AKA you will see the sort of fragrance oil start to leak out of the top of your candle. That being said, with Candle Sciences 464 Soy Wax, it is about a 10% fragrance load, meaning you can have about 10% uh, whatever wax you're using, you have about 10% of that. So you also have to make sure, and this is, the, this is the fun part, you have to make sure that your math is correct. Usually what I would do is convert everything to ounces because fragrance oil is usually measured in ounces. It's best to convert this to ounces. So, so it's 16 ounces in one pound so what you want to do is do 16 times 10 percent which will be 1.6 ounces now these bottles are one ounce each hi editing me here so i realized a couple things that i wanted to address before the video continues that i missed one is that on the actual wax on the little sticker it tells you what temperature to add your fragrance oil at, but it actually doesn't say it in the instructions that they give you for the kit. So that was a little confusing. I completely missed that. But then also at the same time, the instructions on the wax say that the fragrance load is at 6%. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing 6%, but usually the maximum for that wax is 10%. And I just put it at the maximum. Not everyone does that. It's up to you and how you like your candles to smell but yeah so if you read over the instructions on the wax it actually says that so yeah 
continuing on. Depending, it's completely different on what, how much percentage you want to, of your fragrance oil you want to add into your wax. 10% is the maximum. Do not go over 10%. If you go over 10% for this type of wax, again, you might get your wax melting or wax being burned off or, I mean, fragrance oil being burned off or fragrance oil, your candle sweating, whatever the case may be. But 10% is the actual absolute maximum amount you can add. That being said, it also doesn't really tell you about what temperature you should be pouring your wax in and what temperature you should be adding your fragrance oil in at, which also really matters. I'm guessing they, they Candle Science didn't do this because they didn't give you a thermometer, but since I have one, I am going to try to do that step for you. So what we're gonna do first, which is a little, it, it, bear with me because again, this is gonna be different from the instructions. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your one pound bags and you're gonna pour the entire thing into your measuring cup like they told us to. Now you might wanna be careful. You wanna be kinda of careful. And it's okay that you may have to sort of as the instruction said, push some kind of down. Push it down, compact it down. And so here is what our wax looks like. What we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna move to my kitchen. I'm gonna get a pot and fill it with some water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this container inside the pot. This is called the double boiler method. The reason why you do the this double boiler method is because it's easier to control the temperature of the wax so it doesn't get too hot, but also you don't want to burn the wax if it gets too hot. So instead of just heating up the wax directly, because you know, one could argue, well, why don't you just put this wax into a pot and heat up the pot? Um, you don't want the wax to get too hot because in that case, it, it may evaporate and you may end up with le less wax than you anticipate and you don't want that to happen. So we are gonna move to my kitchen and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do from there. Okay, so here's what we're working with. And here you can see that there's some water and then I put the measuring cup into the actual pot. The reason why I did this is because again, you wanna control the temperature. You want to, there's no particular amount, specific amount of water to put in your pot but make sure you don't fill it all the way to the point where like the water is near the top and it's going to spill out because when it starts boiling that water is going to spill out and onto your oven and you don't want that to happen so make sure that when you actually put the measuring cup in here your wax in here that it doesn't push the water to the point where it's going to spill over it looks like it's about to spill over so from here you want to go ahead and turn on your stove and put it on about medium or a little bit under medium. And this is where you wait. I recommend staying near, either near your kitchen or in your kitchen. Don't just walk off, put a timer on for it or something because you want to make sure you are adhering to any sort of fire safety. Don't leave it unattended. But you essentially want to leave this on the oven until it your wax is completely melted. So I will come back once this wax is completely melted and then we'll go from there. Okay, everyone, we are back. All the wax is now melted. What you're going to do is to take the uh, now melted wax out and I'm gonna go back to my sort of desk setup area. I'm gonna try to be careful. Let me see if this is super hot or not. It's not too bad. So I'm gonna take this down to back to my desk area and we're gonna go from there. So we are back at my desk. I have the wax here. It's melted. This is about two cups of fluid ounces and two cups or 16 ounces. So what we're gonna do is we are going to measure the temperature that I set right now. So right as of right now, it's at about 169 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's two different methods in adding your fragrance uh, load or your fragrance oil. The first way that I originally started out with 
was that you would pour your temperature in at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, mix it for a good bit, and then pour it again at like, I think 120 or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't quite remember. The method that I use now is a low temp method. And the reason why I use the low temp method is because it saves, it won't, it'll keep me from burning off fragrance oil, which I don't want to do. So the low temp method is that you pour your fragrance oil in at 110 degrees and then immediately pour. So you pour your fragrance oil, you mix it for a few minutes, and then you're going to immediately pour it into your jar. The temperature at which you, as I said earlier, the temperature at which you add your fragrance oil and your uh, the temperature of which you pour your wax are going to be different temperatures. That's that. For now, we are going to wait for this wax to cool off. Once it reaches about 110 and then we'll come back. <sighs> Stay near it, measure it every few so minutes, or you can set a timer, but each wax cools off differently. Um, for example, bees. if you're working with beeswax, beeswax I found cools off very quickly. So beeswax solidifies pretty fast in my opinion, like it solidifies at like maybe 150. So the temperature at which you would have to add your fragrance oil and mix and pour is different for different sorts of uh, waxes, especially blends. But again, since we're working with 100% soy, we can just do the low temp method, which I think is the easier method in this case and the method that I personally go with. So there's that. So yeah, we will come back once this is at about 1. 10. Our wax is now at 110 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. What you're going to do is take one of your um, fragrance oils and you're going to pour the entire bottle in. So I'm going to pour this one in. I have apple harvest, but it really doesn't matter which one you pour in. Um, so I'm going to pour this apple harvest in the whole bottle. And what you're going to do now is you're going to take a spoon. I have a plastic spoon here and you're going to mix it for a good couple of minutes. The instructions say about two minutes or so. So I'm going to mix here for a good two minutes or so. I don't really know if the amount of time you take to mix uh, the wax will really make a difference, but I'm going to, I'm going to follow the instructions for this part. Okay. And then once you are done mixing, you are going to immediately pour them into the jars. So I'm going to take some jars here and I'm just going to pour it. And what you don't want to do is fill it all. You don't want to fill it up too high. Um, as you can see, which I'm going to show you in a second, there's a line inside the metal tin. Once your wax sort of hits that line, I would stop. That's where I would stop at least. I'm using this sort of, uh, so here there's this sort of, I don't think you could tell. There's a line here on the inside of this jar and you sort of are going to use that to tell you when and where to stop pouring. I'm going to pour this other one. Uh oh, didn't quite reach the top of the, uh, the top of the line, but that's okay. So now let's see if I can back you up just a little bit. We are going to add our wick centers here. So it looks like this. And as you can see, there's sort of this, uh, line here in the middle. What you're going to do is you're going to take, so you're going to take this and you're going to set it down in the middle of your jar here. And you're going to sort of push the wick in to make sure that it's centered. There we go. And what some people do is that they will bend it like this and keep it there. Now, I'm not really used to these sorts of wicks. I'm going to show you an example of the wick centers that I have. These are the wick centers that I have, as you can see. Um, there are three holes here. I usually go just for the one in the middle. 
the one in the middle here, the ones at the sides are for um, double wicking. So if you are using two wicks for a bigger jar, you would use these holes. But here, you just put the wick through the middle, slide it through, and it's in the center. Again, some people sort of lean it, uh, try to bend it over. I don't bother. The, this extra work you don't necessarily need to do. Um, and I'm going to do it for this other one. And you leave them until they solidify. What you're probably thinking, once the wax solidifies, I can immediately light the candle. No. As the instructions said, you light the candle after allowing it to cure for at least three to four days or two to three weeks for optimal scent throw. So curing is essentially leaving your candles alone and not doing anything to it. This curing process just it allows the fragrance oil to bond with the wax. It does need time to bond with the wax. There's different opinions about how long to let the candle cure for. Again, the instructions say anywhere from three to four days or two to three weeks. Two to three weeks is kind of excessive to me. I would say at least in this situation, at least wait one week and then light your candle just because if you light this immediately after it solidifies or even a couple days, it may not be as strong as you want it to be. So remember to allow it to cure because that was my mistake when I first made candles. They did not, I did not allow them to cure. And when I lit them, I was like, they don't smell like anything. So make sure you do that. The other step, is to also, which we're gonna do once this solidifies, is to make sure you put your warning labels at the bottom of your jar. This is also a step that you can do earlier. So after you put in the wicks, before you put it in the wicks, if you wanna do the step first and not last, you can also do that. It doesn't matter when the warning labels are put on the jar, as long as you remember to do that. So while we're waiting for these secure, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three with the Fraser Fur scent. So I'm gonna do that and then I will come back once all the wax has solidified. Welcome back. All the candles have solidified, so we're gonna go ahead and finally trim the wicks. And essentially, you need a pair of, of course, you need a pair of scissors for this part. What I do is I trim the wick, the excess wick first, but then after that, what you wanna do is trim the wick even shorter because it should be about one fourth of an inch high. And the reason why you don't want it to be too big is because you don't want the wick to be too long is because you don't want the flame to necessarily get too tall which could start a fire but also because it makes your candle last longer which is great so i'm gonna go ahead and trim it even shorter mm -hmm. perfect and then after that, we can put the tops back on them. Oh snap, I got wax on the top of this one. And then don't forget that you need to put your warning labels on the bottom of your candle. Boom. And now we're done. So I would say give these about a week, let them sit. And then after a week, you can go ahead and light them. So today is Friday. Next Friday, you can go ahead and light them and see how they perform. But yeah, this was my sort of walkthrough on how to make candles. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to leave them down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. May your stars always align 
and may fate always conspire in your favor. I will see you guys in the next video.